Adhesive Farmers and Chems Crafters, this one's for you. We're farming that digested goo. All right, let's go. Son of a Brahmin, I did it again. I keep forgetting not to hit scrap all after farming digested goo. You'd think after making the mistake so many times, I'd have learned my lesson, right? I'm sure this has happened to plenty of you as digested goo isn't one of the protected junk items and I really wish it was because I have a lot of psycho to craft. Luckily for both you and me, we can replace it pretty easily. I have the best pitcher plant farming route to show you today. Even though you can find the largest number of pitcher plants around Glass Cavern, I like my runs to be just a little bit safer, which is why we'll be farming at Sparse Sundew Grove. Our run is between Lost Home and Sparse Sundew Grove, southwest of Watoga. It's a good idea to bring some sort of protection like my handy gas mask here, as the spores of the grove make it difficult to breathe. From our spawning point, I see one right on our right, but that's not the one I want to start with. We're going to head north and into the grove. You gotta be quick about harvesting these gooey guys or they'll spew toxic gas at you and you'll just come out disappointed and empty handed. That was one. Back towards the one we just saw initially when we came in. Two. Heading south to southeast around the outskirts of the grove. We're going to circle around until we find logs that have fallen down and it's gonna lead us right to our next one. Three. Turn left and north towards the grove. We'll go down into the trenches around the outskirts and follow this along until we get to this clearing on the eastern side. Turning north, we're going to head until we see this really pokey stick just a little bit past face towards the grove and all the spewy spores. Be quick about these next ones. They get triggered really fast because they're close together. Four and five, and right around to the right of it. Six and seven. Turning about face towards this oil seep over here. We're gonna see our next one straight ahead. Eight. I'll show you where our next one is with our binoculars. It's a little bit further out, facing north. See, there it is there. But it's all on the path of where the next few are, so we're just gonna run straight ahead until we get there. Nine. Circling around this plant, we're going to go back down into the trenches around the right side and follow the right path back towards the grove to our next couple of pitcher plants. They're on the sides of these trees over here. Here we have ten. And straight ahead. Go ahead and reach down in there. Eleven. There's one more in this area. You want to face towards that water tower right over there. It's a little bit further ahead, but it's still worth the trip. When you get to the corner of this water tower here, go ahead and face north to northwest. I can't quite see it with my binoculars here, but I've mean, been here enough times. I know where it is. I'll show you. It's hiding in those bushes over there. Once you get close enough, you'll be able to see it pretty clearly. There it is. And 12. That's awesome. That's 12 plants that gave us 24 digested goo, which can be scrapped up to 96 adhesive. If you haven't traveled that far south yet, on the edge of the Meyer and Cranberry Bog are a few plants, which I've marked on the map of where I found them. When you find them in a nuke zone, pitcher plants become irradiated pitcher plants, which are a source of violet flux. So knowing where to find them around Glassed Cavern might come in pretty handy. I was initially pretty surprised when I first scrapped the goo to find out that they give you four adhesive each. I tried comparing how much you get in other adhesive farming methods to see what yields more. If you grow crops and farm purified water, which takes up camp budget and can be attacked by ghouls and little beasties, you can make vegetable starch, which gives you two adhesive each can be good coupled with super duper, but that perk doesn't always proc, so without it, you need 25 of each plant and 25 purified water to make 50 vegetable starch to get 100 adhesive. Another popular method for adhesive farming is hunting down honey beasts or anglers. These bad boys give XP and drop 1 to 4 adhesive each, so in order to get 100, you'd have to down anywhere from 25 to 40 of these beasties. 
That can be a pretty resource intensive task. For the goo, however, 13 plants is all it takes to get over 100 as long as you have the green thumb perk card, and this run can yield up to 96. And folks, it's a super quick and easy run that's not too labor intensive, and apart from caps for fast travel, it doesn't take up any of your resources, which is why I believe it is absolutely the number one best way to farm adhesive. But if you're like me, what you really want all that goo for is chem crafting. In order to make Psycho with it, you're also going to need Toxic Soot Flower. A quick and easy spot to get a lot is just outside of Clarksburg. From here on the map, there's a plant on the other side of this wall. One. Back up and towards the southeast. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. There's plenty more around, but this will get us started. Digested goo is primarily used for making chems, and with those toxic soot flowers, our goo and medex, you can craft Psycho. More Psycho and more goo mixed with Nuka-Cola gives you overdrive. If you have some buff out, a 1 to 1 ratio with Psycho grants you Psycho buff. One buff out and two Psycho creates Fury. To my knowledge, the recipe for Psycho Tats isn't available in game just yet, but I'm sure it'll be released eventually. You can get chem recipes from the Enclave Medical Bay or as a random drop from some of these events. Lastly, digested goo is also used for cranberry bog region specific disease cures and healing salves. Quick tip, if you ever come across a patch of pitcher plants like these with a whole bunch of animals fighting outside, don't get too excited. I've come across this random encounter about 15 times and have never been able to harvest from them. So I've had my camp in the same spot for a while now, and I love the area for so many reasons, but I'd like to know what made you choose where you keep your camp at? Let me know in the comments. Folks, if this video was useful to you, a like, subscribe, and a hello in the comments really helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Much love to you. Until next time, bye!